Okay, well, we have the first of our Christmas movies since it's snowing. Even though it's oh, yeah. still mm. in November, we're up in the high altitude, so we can go with the flow. And this yeah. this movie fits well with the the weather outside, so that was a factor in in choosing it. So, it's a great forgiveness movie. It's 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 a little bit like some of the movies we've been watching. Searching for Sugarman, you know, Sugarman wasn't consciously trying to do anything, and um, all these miracles unfolded. and And this is a good movie too for seeing that the miracle is always happening, regardless of whatever you think you can do to make it happen or prevent it from happening. Miracles are involuntary, and so it's a comedy. But uh, when I first got this tip years ago to watch it, somebody told me there is a Paradise, Pennsylvania. They have a lot of little towns in Pennsylvania named after <laughs> all kinds of very interesting things. So this is one of them. This is Paradise. And, and it's, it's a perfect uh, script for teaching forgiveness and love and for seeing the Christ. You know, it's like everybody in this world, when they seem to see all this error and grievances and everything, and then they've got this struggle to try to go back to try to see the innocence, this little tiny town in Pennsylvania at Christmas time has just got a lot of really wonderful people in it that are good at seeing the Christ, seeing the good, seeing the innocent. It's natural for them. And so, when you get these three brothers <laughs> from, I think it's this New York City, uh, the Furpo brothers, coming down to this beautiful little town in, in Paradise, Pennsylvania, then you have a perfect setup for seeing the Christ and showing and demonstrating that. So they are just being themselves. And they get put into what consider many would consider more extreme situations. Bank robbery, hostages, their town, uh, having all these uh, uh, federal agents descending on it, all kinds of things. And yet, they're just simple folks who love, and they just see the Christ. And so, it's a contrast uh, between judgment and innocence is really what this is. It just shows you um, how heartwarming innocence is and how bizarre and crazy judgment is. And on top of that all, it's a comedy. So you, you get a comedy Christmas music. I mean, we've seen Wonderful Life. There's a lot of great movies, but they, a lot of them can be quite dramatic, even though this seemingly has drama. Uh, it's more like the man who knew too little. I don't think the people really get too hung up on everything that's happening because um, they just have this goodness inside them. So, so I think you'll really enjoy this one. Laugh your way through, and believe me, these Furpo brothers. Uh, you know, it, there's two comedians. And uh, Nicolas Cage uh, played <laughs> play the. So it's like, you know, Nicolas Cage is so spectacular that he's just a great actor. And then you take two basically world class comedians that play <laughs> his two brothers. One who is a kleptomaniac who cannot help but steal just about anything that comes near him. And the other is. Uh, a, like a perpetual kind of liar. He just lies and lies and lies and lies with a face, with a big smile <laughs> on his face. Uh, so those, that's Nicholas's cages. You know, they're in prison, they get out, and he's got to hang around with his brothers. And so he gets lots of opportunities to practice forgiveness. And, and it's even got a little bit of romance, and it's a little bit of a 
it's got an undercurrent of a romantic comedy in there too. Mm. Among all of that, forgiveness movie, Christmas movie, comedy, and actually it's at the very end you'll see that it comes around a bit with a romantic comedy. But it's it's one that you won't soon forget. <laughs> Until you ascend, you won't forget this one. <laughs> okay, let's watch it. Uh, what a sweet, very, very sweet. That final scene was like, that's, that's what the, the Course is, and Jesus are asking to do, is to bring everything back to mind. That was, they were all together in the, you know, being interrogated by the federal agent. But if you bring everything back to your mind, that's what the forgiveness is. Mm -hmm. That everything's mind. It's the belief that, that, that ideas can leave their source, that thoughts can leave the mind of the thinker and take on life of their own. That's what human beings seem to be. Bodies with a life of their own. Or animals with a life of their own. Or a world with a life of its own. The beginning and an end. That's that's what the error is, and the the correction is seeing that there's nothing outside of the mind. So there is not a split between thoughts and the manifestation of thoughts, because ideas leave not their source in heaven. God never left, or Christ never left God, and in in this world, the thoughts of the thinker never left the mind of the thinker. So all the private thoughts eventually get exposed and then there's, of course, there's no blame because no body did anything wrong or did anything to anybody else. That was all the attempt to project the, the thoughts. But in the end, there is no projection. God didn't create projection. So the idea of seeing something outside of you is a, a completely erroneous idea, concept. So it's, it's really beautiful how they all came together and then there was no no finger pointing. In fact, there was the opposite of that. It was just, they were all happy. Mm. And then even the federal agent says, you know, chance like this is not going to come come around again. It doesn't come around. That's the forgive us, forgiveness, forgiven world, yeah. So it's very profound. And the idea that they actually gave the money back in the Course of Miracles, Jesus is and the Holy Spirit are really saying, you think you took something away from God Give it back, what you thought you took away, whatever you thought you took. Autonomy, separation, your mind. <laughs> Give it back. <laughs> Give your mind back to God, because that's what it is in reality. It was created by God, and you can't tear yourself away from God. So there's just this tiny little puff of nothing that is this belief in separation and and you have to give that back too, give it over. So you can give your mind back. That's because it's a belief that you can have a separate mind, a private mind with private thoughts. That's what the whole little puff is. And when you when you give it back, when you give your mind back, then that's the solution. So it's not that there, there are private thoughts; it's that you know you really you're surrendering this whole crazy idea in private minds with private thoughts. And there was all this lying and all this secrecy, but there was that one classic scene where they're 
all three there, and, <laughs> and there was this, everything was coming up, and the finger pointing was going. <laughs> I had a suspicion <laughs> they were, all three of them were throwing the fingers out there, but those were the, the private thoughts, the secrets, again, everybody could feel it. <laughs> Didn't matter what the faces were looking like or whatever. It was all just coming to the surface. I remember seeing this movie years ago, and I had the thought, wow, this is pretty extreme. It's a pretty wacky movie, but then nowadays, in today's times, it just doesn't seem wacky <laughs> anymore. <laughs> I think the politics, the things that are going on, the Dakota pipeline, which Deanna will be addressing soon, and all the things that are going on, it's, it's all the same. It's, there's, no, there's nothing more wacky than anything else. This one seemed to have all this extreme twists and turns, but it's like it's not, it's not even dramatic anymore. We're getting to that point where there's no drama. Mm. There's no drama and tripod is appearing in our movies. <laughs> wow. okay. I'll channel tripod. Lo, I have told you, <laughs> but you must listen. I come to you as a cat. I come to you as a dog. I come to you as Monty. <laughs> Please heed my words. <laughs> <laughs> Three legs or four, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Don't be thrown off by the, the form, the disguise. I am you and you are me. All is well. All is well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. It doesn't matter if it's a pipeline or a, a trunk. <laughs> pipeline, a trunk card. I love how, like, they had a call, really, to, to be free of that, you know, and they really wanted to be free of it, particularly, you know, our main guy, and so he didn't, and they kept trying to leave, but it was like the call, everyone must keep calling them back, and then they tried to run away and leave, but they didn't really want to, they wanted to heal, and they wanted mm. to really accept the love that was being offered, so... With every attempt, you could tell it's like their own mind calling them, calling them back again and again to keep receiving the love until finally, it, it like it all got to the point where they said, "Okay, we're in. You know, we're going to fully accept it." And then all the witnesses could just fully support them and say, "Yes, the past is gone." Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, it's, so, it's very profound, I think. There's one part, pretty late in the text, where Jesus says that every, every second of every day you, you either add something to the script or you take something away, which is really just a way of saying you still don't quite see that it's all perfect and always has been perfect. There's just this nagging little thing sometimes that says, this could be a little bit better or mm, that isn't so good. And so all these images and all these s seeming sequence and series of events are all just like a, like a spinning top and just being used, you know, like that song um, it, Carol King saying, only love is real. 
tracing a line till we can define the thing that allows us to feel only love is real. You know, it's like, it's a fine, fine, fine thing. It's just, it's just you get so surrendered and so surrendered and so taken in and so taken in that you have to go to a place of, of not knowing about everything. That's the secret of salvation is but this. Do not know the thing I am, what I'm doing, where I'm going, how to look upon the world. Salvation is is coming to this awareness that that I, I cannot figure any of it out, and, I, and there's no way to figure anything out. And then th that's where the acceptance comes in. But it's just this little tweak in the mind where there's no attempt to add or subtract anything from the script. Nothing. Nothing is out of place. And, and I remember for years, there was one phase I went through where where um, it was like, it was all training and just watching the script. Like, um, like if somebody would drop some money or or you go to a fast food place and, you know, how we're taught to really keep track of all the dollars and cents. Mm -hmm. And and I would notice that I would have these little things happening where I, I gave some money and and they, they kept something or they didn't give me the change back that I thought I would have, but I would go, ha ha, this is, I know what this is. <laughs> And so I would, I would just watch it. I wouldn't say, oh, wait a minute, you owe me money. Or there'd be times where they'd take some money and they would take more than I thought they should have taken. Like, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't attempt to make the correction in form, even in the most subtle little ways, because it was Jesus saying, yes, this is what I'm teaching you. It's, this, you're just watching what has already gone by. You have to take your mind out of the position where you're trying to interact with it, where you're trying to make something different. You're trying to affect the world. And that's, that's what that line in that song, the world will, that's the song at the end, the world will never, the world will always stay the same, you'll never change it as long as the stars shine above. And, and that's exactly what Jesus is teaching in the Course. Seek not to change the world. Seek to rather to change your mind about the world. You've got to behold it. You've got to, to see you're the dreamer of the dream. But if you're dreaming a dream, it, just like if you were having a lucid dream at night, and you were aware that you're dreaming, you wouldn't try to control the dream. And that's the same opportunity that we get every day is to go into lucid dreaming. You know, that's all he's asking us to do. And that's what all of our extensions are, whether it's about Donald Trump or the North Dakota pipeline or some issue that is, seems to be a controversial, divisive issue and everything. It's, it's not an issue. It really is not an issue. It's like the ego wants to make it an issue, but it's not an issue. The, the world doesn't hold issues. You know, just one issue is believing that that Christ could leave the mind of God. One issue believing that even in regard to this world that somehow there could be something outside of the mind. And I've done so many talks over the years, but it's like the whole teaching of the workbook is that you can't, you can't actually take an object and pull it apart from all the other objects in the cosmos. That's what the separation is, when you try to take something out of all these trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions, it keeps seemingly multiplying, but if you try to take an image out, I, I was in Australia one time I did a whole talk on a blue a blue bottle cap. There's a red bottle cap next to Suzanne, but this cup will work. You, you, you can't 
really take an object out of all the objects and give it a name and give it a color and give it a texture and give it a a substance those are all meanings I have given everything I see all the meaning it has for me and he does go through the in the workbook he says you could you could experience you could attain vision from a table if you would withdraw all your ideas from the table. So we could do this with a blue bottle cap, a red bottle cap, a red cup. You could at attain the vision of Christ if you would just withdraw all the meaning that has been given it. Because you would then withdraw your, all the meaning that's been given everything, all the seeming objects. And that's why we talk about wholeness. That's, that's why we're coming to wholeness and all this seeming guidance is just about letting yourself drift deeper and deeper into the mind to just watch it and behold it. That's what meditation's about, just watching the thoughts. There is no meditation teacher in history that has encouraged you to hop on the train and ride the thoughts. You're just supposed to watch, like Chauncey Gardner and being there, I'd like to watch. You know, it's just, it just comes down to that. And it's quite the art just to behold and watch and offer up any judgments you know to the spirit not because they're wrong or right because but because they they don't have a, a, an essence they don't have a substance never have had This was our living MMT session tonight. Mm -hmm. yeah. You combined a couple of things. I've been trying to understand ideas leave out their source for about three years. But also, three or four years ago, I uh, just felt like I had this mental wall, and I kept pacing back and forth, and there was this cartoon that assisted, but... Um, I realized that the wall itself was meaning, and once I dropped meaning and started seeing things, it no longer was a fork, a fork, a fork was a metal object, it, I just dropped the human meaning, and I felt this rush of energy go through me, and infinite creativity, and it was weird because it's like you get all this creativity, but it's still limited to the physical, like, I no longer had writer's block, but it's not like what I would create had any meaning, which I guess shouldn't. And then what you said now, if you look stare at a table and remove the meaning, if I take that with ideas leave not their source, then I notice that, well, the meaning of the metal or the wood and the stickiness and the color is literally just to form, a, it doesn't matter, it just matters that they come together, and then it comes together and it has the meaning of separation. So it's undoing that meaning of separation and the thing and... It's all coming together to be like, I don't know, back to almost nothingness. God, I guess, the best way I can describe it. But it's 
nice to finally see those ideas come together for a, a actual energetic purpose. Yeah, like a, it's a composite that's being used when you when you pull it back and you make the whole cosmos a composite. Then that's forgiveness. That's what forgiveness is. It's like an, it's a it's a complete integration of everything into one mind. So it's like a synthesis that ultimately undoes the synthesizing. Right. Yeah. It just comes completely whole. It's great just to practice because then you know you just you pay closer attention to the the nuances and whatever seems to be there. We did so many great movies. I was thinking again of that movie God is the the bigger Elvis and what's her name? Dolores Hart. The first screen kiss of Elvis, and then her career takes off, and she becomes an actress that has multiple studios wanting to hire her and receiving, back in the day, money from multiple stu studios. And back in that day of Elvis, a million dollars was <laughs> a lot of money. If you think it's a lot of money, now it's a lot of money. And she turned it all down to go to a, a convent, a working farm up in New England and and follow this calling and even had this this man that had fallen in love with her. She said, No, I can't can't marry you but she was so devoted to Christ, but it yeah, it was just that same kind of surrender, no matter how your life in the world seems to be going and however the world defines it as successful and, you know, famous and all the different things that she just went in the opposite direction to find peace, to go within. But these, it's these extreme teaching examples that really help show the, the point of everything, that, that you don't have to strive for anything in this world. It's okay to let go of false meanings, especially just to see them as the false. See them all as false, you know, as, if you can do that in, in a total sense, like a to and you have a total eclipse of the heart, you have the total opening, opening of love.